It is हाँ बोलिए बोलिए हाँ बोलिए
What is the problem with MyD? What was the problem with MyD? Just support telephonically, whatever is possible. Yes, yes. No need to go. Ask him not to talk to them because my will catch up.
Well, uh, good morning, all of you. Can you listen to me? Yes. Voice is clear. Yes. Voice is clear. Yes. Fine. Take it. So, good morning, all of you. Uh, I am Dr. Giris Patnaik. On behalf of Department of Computer Engineering, SSBT College of Engineering and Technology, Bambori Jalgaon, I welcome you all for this uh, webinar on English for Academic Research Writing. In this webinar, I am going to cover all these topics and more particularly I will be covering the tenses that we are supposed to use in the different sections or in the different parts while writing a research paper. Frankly speaking, I am not good at English and I am assuming that you are much better than me as far as the English is concerned. But my focus is more in the research paper writing. So before I start, I sincerely acknowledge Dr. Steve Wallace. He is one of the pioneer in uh, research writing, particularly in China and Hong Kong. He started providing the academic writing service in 2006 and I am very much impressed by the way he suggested to the research scholars in his country by which they could able to get the quality publications. So I am very much thankful to Dr. Steve Wallace and the examples that I am going to cover in this particular session Those examples I have borrowed from the Dr. Steve Wallace web resources. So let us uh, start with the introduction. Now, if we see the current scenario, we do a lot of research and whatever the research that we do, it is expected that 
we should be in a position to publish in quality journals quality journals i particularly categorize as sci index scopus index and particularly in india we have ugc care so whenever we think of publication no doubt we write a paper then we send to some of the good journals they are what is expected they particularly see what is the contribution to the body of knowledge body of knowledge in the sense it is a complete domain including all the literatures that are available so how much we are going to contribute so as to further advance the scientific knowledge there particularly the reviewers they look at your contribution in the form of your research area that research area may be a very upcoming research area your research methodology it may be some innovative that may also include solving some trending issues may be a societal issue or may be any other issue which is trending and current and they also look at whether you have a unique approach whether you have a unique model is it really going to contribute to the advancement of the scientific knowledge so whenever we write a paper we need to ensure ki yes we are contributing to the advancement of the scientific knowledge now let us understand the very basics in fact you all may be knowing about this academic writing academic writing is particularly maybe a research project maybe a conference paper maybe your final year project reports undergraduate post graduate which is bit more structured manner and it is aimed particularly towards expanding our knowledge so whenever we go through any project report or anything like it is expanding our knowledge at the same time if you see the general writing it is letters emails some articles but when you look at the technical writing the technical writing it mostly focuses on the solution solution that you have provided to a specific problem and more particularly this is in terms of technical problem so for a given technical problem if you are giving a solution then we call it as a technical writing now when you look at the research writing research writing already we are quite familiar with it may be a paper writing and so on by so many journals maybe by so many professional writers but the research writing 
it mostly focuses on a particular point and around that particular point you try to express yourself by writing maybe a paper which will contribute towards the research that we call it as research writing whereas if you look at the academic research writing in the academic research writing the evidence plays an very very important role if you want to justify you must have evidence so obviously citation is very very important it is not only the citation but also the bibliography or the references that you are going to include that plays a very very important role and that is why we call it as academic research writing now when we start writing how do we do it obviously during the research we mostly focus on methods then we do some experimentation then we focus on the getting the results so during the research work we are mostly focusing on methods and results but but when we finalize a particular journal where we would like to publish our work after selecting the target journal we generally write the introduction discussion abstract and title this is how generally we do now here the most important point is we have selected a journal currently we are writing the introduction discussion abstract and title but currently we are writing it but if you look at the methods and results that already we have done so while writing the methods and results they are in the past past obviously methods and results while writing it should be in past tense so in fact i'll go through all those details very soon now whenever we write a paper so what is not acceptable this is very important for all of us to understand ki what what type of paper it is not accepted if it is a routine extension of a previous reports or previous works obviously it is very difficult to publish such kind of paper in good forum they generally give a comment and the comment that you find from the reviewer is yet another paper the main reason is it is something like a routine extension and so many people have already done similar type of extension work that is why you get a comment like yet another paper and the paper gets rejected 
Similarly, if it is an incremental or it is a fragmentary report, then also the possibility is the list of getting accepted. Then if the paper is very poorly organized, then also it reflects the quality is very poor. And obviously the most important is violation of ethical guidelines and more particularly the plagiarism. And when we talk about the plagiarism, it may be of others or it may be of your own. If you are plagiarizing your own paper, then also it is not acceptable. In that sense, if you see the ethical issues that as a part of research that we should follow, multiple submissions, it is not allowed. Redundant publications, it is also not allowed. Plagiarism, as already I said, it is not allowed. Any data fabrication or falsification that is also not allowed. And improper author contribution. Improper author contribution is if you are adding some of the names, those who are the sleeping partners of your paper, that we call it as a improper author contribution. So, we should not add the names of the authors, those who haven't really contributed. So, these things are part of the ethics and we must follow these ethics. Obviously, language, it plays a very important role because the way we write a paper, if it prevents the reviewers from understanding, if the reviewers cannot understand what you have written, so the paper cannot be accepted. It will not be accepted. So what we need? We need a best English and of course a high quality science, the technical work that you are going to put in that paper. Obviously, it should be a very high quality. And the readers, whenever your paper will get published, and your paper, there may be so many readers, they are going to refer your paper, they should not keep on guessing what exactly you mean. So clarity is more important. The quality of science, obviously it is there, but in addition to that, the language, the way we write is very, very important. So when we talk about language, obviously, it is the English. Now if I compare the research with the builders, builders, it is the, at the construction site, the people, those who are going to build, construct, house, flat, complex. I am just trying to compare with that. So researchers, they are like a paper builder because I am going to pay, I'm going to prepare the paper. I'm going to write the paper. So researchers are nothing but the paper builders where whatever the research you do, it is the material and when you write it, it is like a building process. And the grammar is the main tool. So that is the reason why 
the grammar is very very important for all of us and the main reason of rejection is is the poor paper building that is mostly in the english we may have a very good scientific content but if we lack in putting it on paper with proper language that everybody can understand the reviewers can understand so verb it is a tool that is you will find it as a saw and punctuations they are like your hammers and nails so that is the reason why here i will focus mostly on verb tense and the punctuations apart from the verb tense and punctuation the other important aspect that we need to focus on is coherence between sentences coherence between sentences means how do you connect one sentence with another sentence now in this example if you see i have the most important part of an essay is the thesis statement now here in the first sentence the keyword is thesis statement now the same keyword i am using for the second sentence that is the thesis statement introduces the argument of the essay this is how we are connecting one sentence with the other sentence and this connectivity we call it as a coherence so while writing a paper the coherence between the sentences is very very important so whenever you start writing you write one sentence see that there is one keyword which is repeated in the next sentence that gives you a very good connectivity and the reviewer can very easily understand or any reader can very easily understand the contents so when you write a paper the common tenses that generally we use 99% in a paper 99% the tenses that we use is your simple present simple past simple future present perfect and past perfect i have given the example and i know you are bit familiar with these tenses so simple present it is they discuss simple past it is they discussed simple future it is they will discuss present future they have discussed past perfect they had discussed future tense it is very rarely used make it a very clear that future tense it is very rarely used and more particularly whenever you want to write the future work at that time only you are supposed to use the future tense and if at all you are writing any proposals proposals in the sense i am talking about the pro 
project proposals so in that project proposals you are free to use the future tense but whenever you are writing a paper except the future work you are not supposed to use the future tense now let us briefly see the tenses in english that already i said present past future right so those tenses i'm not going to go very deep into this now see simple present when generally we use simple present it is the activities that we repeat regularly or whenever we say states feelings opinions at that time we use simple present this is just a quick revision you know all this i am not going to focus much on these tenses i am assuming that you are already quite familiar with these things now this is simple past anything that has happened past so you can use past tense so i have given different scenarios where we can use the past tense this is your simple future so the simple future generally we use either by using a will so you can see the example it will rain tomorrow right and the other way that we can use going to so it is going to rain tomorrow if you see the example it is going to rain tomorrow so there are nothing but the uh, simple future and in the bold letter i have clearly mentioned where this simple future tense is to be used present perfect they have discussed they have discussed which is already finished or it is already achieved activities or any kind of achievements the time is not important so at that time we can very well use present perfect past perfect they had discussed so present is have discussed past is had discussed so here in the bold you can see to talk about an event happened earlier before other past event so i have given so many examples fine so there you can use the past perfect tentative present tense this is very very important we should be very much careful while using these tentative present tense tentative present tense always creates a doubt always leads to a uncertainty and in your paper there is no question of uncertainty because i know you have done the work and then you are writing the paper so there is no doubt that you haven't done it there is no uncertainty so obviously while using this tentative present tense we should be very very careful so particularly i have used here the words i have explicitly mentioned will would may might so these things leads to uncertainty because already you have done it why it is will why it is may why there is should be a uncertainty you have done it so be confident you have done it but in some part we need to use tentative present tense so obviously where to use we should be very very careful in fact we are going to discuss ki where we are going to use these tentative present tense now let us uh, start with the real stuff that 
I will be focusing more on this. That is your tenses in the academic research writing. So here we are going to discuss what are the tenses that we are going to use in abstract. What are the tenses that we should use in the introduction. Similarly methods, results, discussion, then future recommendations. So let us start with one by one. So whenever we write an abstract, abstract always includes these five points. Motivation, problem statement, methodology, what is the result, what is the conclusion. So whenever you write an abstract, it is one paragraph, no doubt. So in that paragraph, if you write two sentences from each of these points for motivation, two sentences, for problem statement, two sentences, methodology, two sentences and so on. So you will get 10 sentences. So 10 sentences are good enough for a paragraph and that is why that is how we need the abstract. So whenever you write abstract, make sure that these five points are always covered. But whenever we want to write these five points in the abstract, what should be the tenses? The tenses already we have seen on the earlier slide simple present, simple past, simple future, present perfect, past perfect. So whenever you write an abstract, do not use any future tense. That is what I will insist because already we have done it. The method and result that already we have done it and the abstract, we are writing it at the very end. So we are 100% confident. So avoid using the future tense. For results, obviously it should be present tense. Any test, test, it is the experimentation that you do. That is in a past tense. Because experiment already I had done it and now I am writing it. So at the time of writing the experimentation already I had done it. So that is in a past tense. And any implications or conclusion you can very well write it in a future tense how it is going to affect, how it is going to contribute. That you can very well use as a future tense. That we call it as an implication of your research work. So these are the tenses that we are supposed to use, we should use rather. I will suggest you people to use in the abstract. Now let us look at the introduction. So whenever I am going to write an introduction, I need these five points. These five points you can think of. One point, one paragraph. So obviously you are going to get at least five paragraphs. The sixth paragraph will be your the organization of the paper. So that is what it is expected when we talk about the introduction. So in introduction I must get very clearly six paragraphs, five paragraphs from each the points that you see right now on your slide and the sixth paragraph is nothing but the organization of your paper. So here if you see 
current knowledge or previous studies because whenever we start writing introduction we always start with a general view in a broad sense because we want to expose our domain or sub domain to the reviewer and to the reader that is my first paragraph where we write the current knowledge or previous studies and that obviously it should be in a present or present perfect tense the second paragraph it is a literature review so broadly you can have one paragraph for the literature review that literature review is in a broad sense in a not shell not necessary that it should be very specific to your work so there you will have to use the present present perfect or past tense we will come up with the examples very soon don't worry then you have knowledge gap so what is the gap this is some something like a motivation the knowledge gap that i could able to identify which is nothing but the motivation for you to take up this particular research work that we can very well write it using present or present perfect then you have a problem statement problem statement again it should be present tense or past tense and finally the fifth paragraph it is nothing but what is the importance of this particular study what is the rationale of your research work there we should use the tentative present tense so let us see one by one with the example now this is for your current knowledge or previous studies and uh, i said it is your present tense or present perfect tense now see the example programming skill required this is a present tense and i am writing it in a very general sense because this is a very first paragraph of my introduction clean water is a basic human need so clean water is a basic human need this is my current knowledge previous studies have indicated now see i am using present perfect tense so whenever you want to say about the current knowledge or previous studies which is nothing but the first paragraph of your introduction it should be in present tense or in present perfect tense the second paragraph is your literature review which is your present tense or present perfect or your past tense now see some of the examples i have given whenever i call it as a literature review so you need to refer you need to have the citation you need to refer some of the papers you need to refer the work done by some of the researchers so fact citation so whenever you are saying any fact so it should be present tense now here you can see r is used in most deserts of the world transitions between topographic elements are abrupt this i am saying it in a very general because still i am at the introduction part in the introduction part we need to have a very general things mostly related to your domain or sub domain not necessary that it should be very much related to your very much related to your actual work not at the grass root but talk about in a broad sense so in a broad sense whatever the paper that you have referred as an evidence that you need to have it on the introduction part now when you have a multiple study citation so you have multiple authors now see you can have like the way it is given smith that is in 
Johnson and Wheeler 2003, Madsen in 2009. So I am referring to multiple papers, more than one papers. And there I am using the word, researchers have studied, because it is not a single paper, there are so many papers. So I am using several researchers have studied. So this is your present perfect tense. But when you want to give a single paper, in a single paper, if you want to use, then it must be past tense. So here you see I am using, Ellington found that teachers allocated equal time to all groups. I am using the verb found and it is in a past tense. So for a single cite, study citation, I must use the past tense. But if it is a multiple study, that is more than one paper, then we need to use present perfect tense. And there I can very well write several researchers or I can use researchers. The common verbs that in the past tense generally it is used for the single study citation, the way we are using found. Similarly, the other words that also you can use that is investigated, so and so investigated because it is a single paper, studied, compared, analyzed, found, examined. So, so all those things, this is related to your Single study. Single study means one paper. When you talk about more than one paper, that is your multiple study. So for multiple study, you will have to use present perfect tense. But for a single study, you will have to use past tense. Knowledge gap. So whenever you want to write one paragraph for your motivation, highlighting what is the knowledge gap. So there you will have to use the present or present perfect. So in this example, if you see, few studies have reported, so have reported. Similarly, few studies have investigated, so I am using present perfect. Similarly, if you see the last one, no previous work on the relationship between X and Y currently exist. So this exist is your present. So here I am I'm highlighting what is the gap, what is the knowledge gap, because of which you got motivated to choose the research problem that you have undertaken. Problem statement it can be present or past and generally we write it as an objective. So there are so many ways of writing problem statement but here I am particularly focusing on while writing the objective. So it can be present or it can be past. So you can see how the purpose of this study was but, but if I am using in the present tense then how I am writing it. The aim of this paper is, so you should be very careful about what is the subject of your English sentence. So accordingly, either you are supposed to use the past tense or you are supposed to use the present tense. The rationale for study so I am talking about the importance like problem statement that means you have decided what exactly you want to do and then now I want to write a conclusive statement ki why this is so important, how it is going to affect the society, how it is going to affect the technology, how it can help in the advancement of the knowledge that is your tentative present tense. So I am using me. So in the earlier slide already I have listed 
the tentative present tense and there i have already listed the tentative present tense verbs may will would so all those things are a tentative and here i am using those tentative because i haven't done this i haven't done this but i am hopeful that these things are going to be happen these things are going to advance the knowledge so this is my rational for study so that i spoke about the introduction now let us look at the methods because this is the core part methods results and discussion these are the three core parts of any paper and it should have the scientific quality in addition to the scientific quality the english words we should be very very careful while using the verbs so whenever we write a method so on an average on an average i listed only a few points you may have you may write the way you want as far as the methods are concerned the method section is not restricted to only these points that you see in the current slide it may be beyond this as well but some of the important things here i have highlighted like describing multiple previous studies it is very much similar to what we have done in that literature review it is a present perfect tense because whenever you want to write a method first you would like to say ki as far as the literature so and so they have done so and so right because that is your base paper fine so at that time we will be using this present perfect tense then describing conventional is working here so modified material which is a past tense then describing a general population like you are talking about the input where you are showing some general population 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 of your data right population of data in the sense like uh, 100 data you considered or 1000 data or 1 million data so this is a population so that we need to see present tense then if you want to say some specific sample that is again a past tense because at the time of experimentation you uh, used those specific samples so it should be in the past tense and the procedure whatever the procedure you followed you followed at the time of performing the experimentation and now i am writing and since i am writing now but the procedure that you performed the procedure that you followed it is a past so obviously it should be in a past tense there in the method if you see describing multiple previous studies that already i have said present perfect tense so this already like it is very much similar to multiple study in the literature review that we saw so you have have investigated then has been rare right so i'm using has been because present perfect progressive tense this is also allowed fine so here whenever i'm describing the multiple previous studies so it is always present perfect tense then if you want to say some findings some results suggestions of a single previously study that is a single study that already we have seen in the literature review part so we are supposed to use the past tense so you can see determined reported so all those things uh you can very well use then describing the conventional material 
so it is always a present tense fine so here you can see uh, some example like the scanning electron microscope generally contains a tungsten hairpin filament so this is a conventional material or the equipment that i am using so whenever i am using any conventional material or equipments so at that time i am supposed to use the present tense the find when you actually performed the experimentation which is in a past and currently we are writing a paper so that is the reason why it should be in a past tense describing the population so present tense right so we need to mention we need to use uh, present tense so you can see all students who apply for admission to ssbt take the common entrance test so you are showing the common population under consideration for the experimentation then when you want to explain and uh, describe the equations and variables because it may happen that in your method uh, there are so many equations and uh, you want to show you what that equation states so whenever you want to uh, show what the equation states or it may be with your figures also so for equation and figure whenever you want to show what it exactly states so that time we should use the present tense so here you can see the example this equation illustrates the expected behavior of the spin system because i am i am explaining i am describing about the equation so that is the reason why i am using the present tense and this equation i am writing it now i am writing it now on my paper fine so that is the reason why it is in the uh, present tense if you are talking about any specific samples that already i said so you will be using uh, the past tense now you can see the example the students surveyed in this survey we are not a randomly selected population so i am talking about the sample that i am using right and this is like this is like a updated material fine so as already i said for updated materials you need to have a past tense so similarly for the specific sample also you need to have a past tense now while writing the procedure again i said uh, like the procedure that you followed it is at the time of experimentation and currently i am writing it so since currently i am writing it so for me the procedure that i had followed that is past so while writing the procedure that you followed as a part of method so that is a past tense so you can see very well stress was applied to the rubber segment so i am using a past tense here a questionnaire was administered to evaluate so this is in the past so whenever you want to say the procedure at that time it should be past always now let us look at the results so when you look at the results so figures the way i said the way i said for equation right same thing applies for the figure as well so whenever you want to say something about the figure that you have included in the result section may be a graph fine so you have included a graph in the result section and you want to refer that figure now you want to say what is this figure so there obviously you need to use present tense because the figure or the graph the graph i have drawn now that graph was not drawn when i performed the experimentation and got the results that is the reason why whenever we want to locate any kind of figure so we should use the present 
uh, tense. So most of the cases we write as shown in figure 1. Right? So similarly, wherever you want such kind of things, so you are supposed to use the present tense. So we will see the examples very soon. Presenting the findings, it is the past tense. Because you perform the experiment earlier. And at that time, whatever the findings you got, findings are based on the result. Results are, be, are basically a numerical data. Based on that numerical data, whatever is your observation, that is your findings. And that observation, when it was, this was at the time of performing the experimentation. So that is the reason why you say it as a past tense. And whenever you are comparing your result with the others, it must be in the present tense. Because you are comparing now, that is why we say it as a present tense. <coughs> and whenever you want to give any conclusive statement, whenever you want to give any kind of comments on your results, then obviously it should be present tense and you may use the tentative verbs like may, will, would, could. So those things may be used. So particularly in the results, we need these points minimum. Apart from these, you may have so many things, other things. Now let us see one by one the locating figure. As already I said, it is a present tense. Now see, I am using results of the tests are presented in table 1. Table 2 lists the results of the test. Figure 3C displays. So I am using the present tense because here I am explicitly specifying which table, which figure. Fine. And those things are there in my paper. Fine. And those, those graphs... I have drawn now. I have put the results in the form of a table now. Results, we got it at the time of experimentation. That is a raw data. But how did we represent? We represent it in the form of a table. And that table I am creating now. So that is the reason why it is present tense. And in my paper, it is I am referring it as a present tense. Presenting the findings. So, you have put the data, you have put the data in a tabular form and based on that, you are going to present your findings. So, the findings are nothing but the present tense because these findings are nothing but your observation at the time of the experimentation that you performed. So, the way we write it here, you can see the example. Subjects in this study spent more time engaged in activities. So, this is the finding. After performing the experimentation, I got a raw data. And from that raw data, this is what my observation is. So, I am using a spent. Now, similarly, you can see Participants in each reward trial selected the high probability stimulus. So here again it is a past tense. In the last example also you can very well notice as a group diverse mothers spent over twice as much time in employment as married mothers. Right? So this is your observation. That is what the findings you will see. And these findings are based on the results that you got uh, after performing the experimentation. Then if you have uh, some other different types of results, uh, they are also like as already I said for the past tense in the finding. So uh, similarly for finding you have the past tense. Similarly for the different kind types of results also you can use the past tense. So you can see the uh, example, the highest incidence of death was found among senior citizens, right? So this kind of thing you can very well do. So this is written in a past tense always. 
then when you are comparing with the results with the other studies like obviously we need to always compare our work with some of the earlier works so there we are supposed to use the present tense because the comparison we are doing it now fine so that is the reason why we are using a uh, present tense here now here you can see the example um, as opposed to previous research our measurements are significantly smaller because this comparison we are doing it right now similarly the other example if you see conversely our results demonstrate improved performance so i'm using the present tense whenever i want comparing with with the um previous ones commenting on the results because finally you will have to give a com comment you need to give a conclusive uh, statement and you need to say how it is going to progress further so there you will have to use the tentative present tense so in this example uh, you can see it very well hyperactive children may be generally responsive to amphetamines so i'm using the tentative present tense verb may then in the second example i'm using the verb appear third example i'm using seem fourth example i'm using might so these are the tentative present tense and this already i have listed in the earlier slide and you are supposed to use these tentative present tense where you want to say the implication of your result that we call it as a commenting on the results now if you look at the discussion now as far as the discussion is concerned uh, these are the points that uh, we expect because discussion is the most important part of your paper your discussion should be very very strong because you are going to argue that you are superior than others so this discussion is purely on the technical ground it is not on a um logical it is purely a technical ground discussion so in your paper discussion is the most crucial part and uh, a technical person will always love to see how you have written the discussion part how you have put forth your arguments which is justifying that yes your work is superior so here some of the things that if you see referring to the purpose referring to the hypothesis restating the findings so these things already we have stated earlier and almost in a nutshell i am uh, again putting it here but but it should not be a duplicate sentence you should change the sentence formation of the sentence you should change so this is your past tense explaining the findings whatever the finding you got now you need to explain it you need to argue so for that like you will have to use past or tentative present tense limiting the findings it is some kind of your assumption you might have made some assumptions fine so whatever the assumptions you have made that is going to limit your findings so that is what you need to have a past or tentative present tense then comparing the findings it is in the present tense like already we have seen in the earlier slide when you want to compare with others so present tense implication like how how it is going to affect in future so i will use may will so it may happen it will be so so that is your tentative present tense so that is nothing but your implication then the recommendation and application so obviously it is a tentative present tense you are giving a recommendation you are saying how it is going to be uh, can be applied so it is a tentative but you haven't done it so that is why it is tentative present tense so you can use may will can 
code those you can use now let us see one by one so referring to the purpose referring to the hypothesis restating the findings that only i said it is a past tense and uh, in the past tense like you can see the example attempted in this research we attempted to assess two theories of behavior in the second example if you see we originally assumed so i'm using the past tense in the third example if you see the principle of readability was so all these things are on past tense explaining the findings so whenever you are going to explain your findings so at that time it is your tentative present tense with past or present in the second verb this is very important very interesting in fact because whatever the findings that you got that you found you need to explain it further you need to elaborate a bit which will justify ki yes you are superior than the others so for that purpose uh, you can see the example how it is these results i mean to say that my current result whatever i got so these results indicate this is a tentative tentative one i am using indicate that microbial activity caused some immobilization caused is nothing but the second verb and the second verb i am using it as a past here similarly the sec next e second example if you see these results indicate and there i am using the word cause so this is a uh, second verb which is a present tense so you need to frame the sentences in a similar manner right so what uh, the technique that you will have to follow ki for every point you start writing at least two sentences fine then you try to connect by using the sentence coherence so that will give you a complete paragraph or a complete section then comparing the findings with the previous findings that already i have been telling so many times that is a present tense because i am going to compare with some of the earlier works so here are corresponds agree so these things are used in the present tense then limiting the findings that already i said some kind of assumption because of some assumption uh, you have there is some restriction that you have come across in your findings it is only because of your assumptions right so in that context you can very well say like this way you can see the example the sample was very small other industries may produce different results right the sample involved only children aged 3 to 5 years old so based on some limitations based on some assumptions your findings got restricted so if you want to express that so that we should express by using the past tense or tentative present tense implications tentative present tense because implication is like how it is going to affect in future how it can be further extended how it can be applied somewhere else but you haven't done it now since you haven't done it so obviously it is a tentative it is a kind of recommendation or it is a kind of uh, suggestion but you haven't done it so that is the reason why you will have to use the word uh, the tense that is your tentative uh, present tense so you can see the words that i have used seem could appear then this is your recommendations and applications obviously this is again the tentative because this is only your apidic uh, recommendation but you haven't actually applied you are stating some of the applications but you haven't actually tested under those applications so it is your suggestions it is your recommendations so obviously uh, may will so it is a tentative tentative present tense so i'm using here the uh, should recommend so these are the uh, verbs 
that are generally used in the tentative present tense. Future recommendation that is your tentative present tense. So you can see the example like this research may provide an alternative. So this is your future work. You are making some kind of recommendations. So all those things are for different uh, sections of the different chapters, we saw what are the suggested tenses that are that should be used while writing a paper. Now, as already I said, verb they are very crucial when we write a paper. Apart from the verb, the punctuation are also equally important. So now let us look at some of the very interesting things as far as your punctuations and capitals are concerned. You may be knowing it, but still then, I would like to emphasize certain things which matters a lot as far as your paper is concerned, research paper is concerned. So punctuation, let us start with the colon. So when you want to use the colon, colon you will be using whenever you want to introduce a list. Now you can see the example, you can see the example. This study will examine four major factors. So what are the four major factors that you want to list? So in order to list that, you will have to use colon. So I'm using colon to list those four major factors that are nothing but your interest rate, financial structure, management issues, and so on. Now here, the important thing you need to uh, see it very carefully, uh, how, many, how many are listed? Interested rate one, financial structure two, management issues three, systematic process four, right? So before the last one, I'm using the word and, this is very interesting, important, right? So whenever you are listing, so you should use the and which is connecting. And always remember that before and you have a comma. That in fact we will come at in the uh, next slide where to use comma. So I'm just highlighting some of the important things. Now this is your regarding the semicolon. So. Uh, Whenever you find two independent sentence and uh, still you want to have a very close connection. So there we need to use the semicolon and uh, like see some of the example if you see words used after semicolon they are like however, instead, nevertheless, specifically, equally important. For example, these words I am supposed to use after semicolon. Now you can see the example at the bottom. 95% of students recognize the importance of clear writing, semicolon. However, they often fail to apply this knowledge. So before, however, I am using the uh, semicolon. Fine. So, so like these words, however, instead, nevertheless, specifically, generally you should use these words after semicolon because that is how you connect two, two sentences. Now you can see the comma where we can use the comma. So wherever we need to join two independent clause, there we need to use comma. And uh, for for connecting, uh, we need to use these kind of things for and not but or yet. So so these are the connecting things. So whenever you want to use these things, so you need to have that uh, comma. So it, it should be before, comma must be used before these things, before and, before nor, before but, before or. So before these words, you need to have a comma. 
but after you see however therefore accordingly finally instead so after these you need to have the comma so after these words after however you will be using the comma and similarly some other transitional expressions like equally important for example in fact on the contrary on the other hand so you need a comma after these uh, words and these words are generally used for the connecting and whenever you want to have a connecting so you need to use this comma so be careful uh, where to use comma so comma to be used before this and or but so right and uh, similarly like your however therefore accordingly like you need to use comma after this now this is again interesting like sometimes we use the word which sometimes we use the word that now see 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 it very carefully like which with comma that it is always without comma now see the example the books comma which stem then i continue so here you see before which there is a comma but the same example i am writing it again by using the word that <coughs> so if i am using the word that so now see there is no comma right so whenever you are using the word that there should not be any comma but whenever you are using the word which there must be a comma before that before which so be careful about these punctuations capitals when to use the capitals we know some of the things the first two word in a sentence it is always capital like in i i is capital this we know but name of organization whenever we want to write the name of our organization now see the first letter i made it capital college engineering technology so you need such kind of capitalizations days and month so whenever you write a day it must be capital whenever you write a month it must start with a capital letter nationality words like india or indian so i must be capital names of people or place so whenever you want to uh, want to write a name first letter must be capital for all each word and similarly whenever you want to write any place so first letter must be capital always then book title so whenever you want to have any book title so at that time also you need uh, the capitals now let us look at some of the uh, common tools i mean common mistakes fine so while writing a paper we should be very careful uh, explicitly i would like to highlight some of the common things unknowingly we do it so i would like to highlight those things now uh, some of the useful tips first i would like to say like avoid using long sentences because generally what we do we do a common mistake whenever we start writing it and we go on extending a sentence uh, by using some connecting words and all that like but it is always advisable that every sentence you should restrict maximum up to eight words you should not write a sentence which is more than eight words because the moment you write a sentence with more than eight words it the reader finds it very difficult to understand the reviewer he will get confused so i will advise to use at the most eight words in a sentence so even if you are writing a very long sentence you try to break it you try to break the sentence so that it can restricted it can be restricted only up to the eight words complicated words avoid using uh, some complicated words so generally what happens is like unnecessarily uh, you think okay, i want to have a very rich english 
so you will start using some uh, very uh, difficult words to understand which is not that very common so generally people what they do like uh, you refer the dictionary synonym antonym and you try to fetch the words from there which leads to a very complicated and uh, the common readers they find it very difficult to understand then avoid over using the conjunctive words like however in addition moreover like use it no doubt you will have to use it but do not use it in excess because repeatedly if you are using these things it creates a irritation for the reader not only for the reader but also for the reviewer also spoken abbreviations it's where not such kind of things are not to be used abbreviation whenever you are using abbreviation first time you need to give the complete uh, full form of it then after that you can very well use the abbreviations so it should be defined first before you use it and the most important part of it is each paragraph should have one main point never think of adding so many things in a single paragraph whenever you find that the point you come whenever you find that there is another point the break it break it into two paragraphs so make mm. it a very clear that every paragraph will talk about only one single point not more than anything else some more tips like avoid uh, using the passive verbs this already you know maybe like use verbs more than nouns then do not use any abstract word or fuzzy words avoid using the word this generally i don't i don't uh, uh, use i don't uh, like advise to use these kind of things like uh, certain words i restrict i we this that our so such kind of things i i generally uh, ask suggest not to use the reason behind that is let us say for example if i am writing a sentence for example i am a research scholar so i wrote a, this particular sentence in my uh, paper i am a research scholar now that paper when a reader is going to read it how he will read it he will read it as the way you have written i am a research scholar but the problem is whether the reader is a research scholar no so that is the reason why you are not supposed to use those kind of words which will create a confusion in the reader's mind or in the mind of the reviewers so generally i suggest not to use the words i you our we this that such kind of things which creates a confusion in the readers mind so generally we should write in the readers perspective the consistency of the verbs that obviously we need grammatical mistakes and spell check spell spelling mistake so a grammatical mistake there are so many online grammatical tools are available on the internet so what you can do you can directly copy a paragraph and paste it in that particular grammatical tool and automatically it will tell you ki where there is a grammatical mistake and there are certain websites where they uh, also help you in suggesting the verbs ki what are the other verbs that you can use so that the sentence can be made uh, grammatically correct so you can refer you can take the help of those uh, uh, websites which will help you to remove the grammatical mistakes and the same thing is for the uh, spelling mistakes it is not at all accepted uh, even if if you are writing a paper of 6 pages or even 12 pages so single spelling mistake or single grammatical mistake it may happen that your paper will get rejected now see some of the common mistakes like where to use the hyphenated words uh this is very interesting uh where to use the hyphenated words where to where not to use the hyphenated words so 
if the first word is a noun so you can very well use the hyphen so it range limited so there you can use the hyphen uh, but in the this one if you see the, the second word is a gerund that is ing like you can see the example uh, spell splitting the example that i have given is a spell splitting so splitting it is a gerund because there is an ing into it so whenever you are uh, the second word is a gerund so uh, you are not uh, you should not use the hyphenation so be careful while using the hyphenation then whenever you are mentioning the integer numbers so anything less than 10 you must uh, spell out so you must uh, spell out that is what it is integers less than 10 are spelled out right so whenever you are writing a single digit it must be spelled out for double digit you can very well write it in a digit no problem and the last point you see here the most in important thing that we do generally the common mistake that is a fractional numbers are considered always as a plural so you need to write like this 1 meter it is fine this is a singular but whenever you are writing 0.5 now you need to write meters this is a plural right so fractional numbers are always plural so you should use the word plurals then vowels you know very well they are supposed to you are supposed to use the and then negative words are uh, we should avoid using the negative words and double negative words so double negative words you can see not invalid so there is no meaning to it like not uninteresting so there is no meaning to it so such kind of things we should avoid using it then countable object and uncountable object so we should be very careful about which is countable and which is not countable now see uh, uh, for a lot of we can use when it is uncountable object so as an example if you see a lot of money so money is uncountable why if i had have written like rupee dollar pound so rupee dollar pound they are countable but money is not a countable so that is the reason why we should write a lot of money and wherever there is a countable objects you should write many so you can say many users so users uh, it is a countable so there you can use the word many a large amount it should be used again a uncountable objects then some more work some of things like uh, greatly improves right so you can use this instead of highly then also we do something uh, contrary to so it is better to use the word contrary to rather than writing it at uh, in contrary to or you can say contrary to so now if you see the last point work and research they are already plural never write works never write researches no it itself is a plural so you do not uh, you don't convert it to a plural so work research it implies that it is a plural then do not use any abbreviated forms that already i have uh, stated like the abbreviation uh, you are not supposed to use then multiple superlative multiple superlative like is very best so such kind of things uh, uh, we are not supposed to use so so that is what we need to focus on while writing it uh, very minute things unknowingly we do such kind of mistakes so we should try to avoid doing such kind of mistakes then uh, here you see that uh, uh, words like a uh, figure table theorem they should be used as a noun so 
noun it must be capitalized so that is how i need to do now see as an example in the last point i said figure 1 so you have a capital f so whenever you are giving a numbering maybe figure 1 maybe equation 1 maybe table 1 so whenever there is a numbering so first letter must be capital and whenever you are not using any numbering like you see the other example in this figure the example that i have given is in this figure now in this figure uh, see i am not using any numbering now since i am not using any numbering so that uh, a small f is correct no problem but but whenever you have a numbering then the first letter must be capital like for figure 1 f must be capital equation 2 e must be capital table 5 t must be capital so whenever you are using any numbering that must be capital first letter must be capital always then some of the other points like do not start a sentence with also right uh, then besides moreover right after semicolon you can use the word moreover but but not after the full stop because when you are using a full stop and then you are starting a moreover word uh, that is not fair because moreover is the word that is used for connecting two sentences and uh, here that uh, rule applies for that uh, semicolon so you need to apply the rule for the uh, rule of the semicolon you cannot start a sentence with uh, moreover so such kind of things we need to be bit careful because we do such common mistakes and that leads to rejection of our paper now avoid uh, repeated uses like the same words you are uh, using again and again now see the example how it is the storage required in the first case is greater than that in the second case this way we need to write it now here the second case what i mean the storage required in the second case so now see how it is the storage required in the first case is greater than the storage required in the second case so in this one i am repeating the storage so this repetition is not allowed you are supposed to avoid uh, the repetition of the word so that uh, repetition of the word storage uh, it should be avoided while uh, writing the uh, sentences then as you know like american english um, british english like there are so many spelling uh, are bit different so uh, we need to be very consistent about ki whether we are following uh, british english or american english so uh, be careful about all those things uh, one interesting thing that i would like to uh, show you now here you see uh, like if you notice um uh, color so you have a double color, double code c o l o r now see the full stop is inside the double code now be careful like in some of the earlier examples also you will find ki wherever there is a complete sentence and i am putting it in a double quote the full stop must be within the double quote right now that is the part of i think it is a part of your british english but but make it sure that uh, like if you are putting the double quote i mean uh, if you are including that uh, full stop within the double quote then it should be consistent otherwise you put it outside the double quote everywhere right but the only exception is a uh, question mark question mark cannot be inside the double quote that that you need to be a bit careful about that is the exception that uh, we have so finally um, i will summarize what uh, we saw so far so so be confident because it is your work and uh, you are uh, putting it on paper so be confident since you have done it avoid using the tentative present tense wherever possible 
because uh, that uh, tentative present tense it is basically your uh, leads to a bit uncertainty so uh, be careful while using those uh, words which leads to uncertainty so wherever i have specified so you can uh, use those uh, tentative present tense each paragraph should have one main point so make it a very clear that uh every paragraph should have only one point so never mix up so many things in a single paragraph so uh, you need to break up all those things then for literature review as already i said like uh, you need to use the present present perfect or past tense for method or procedure you should use past tense results uh we should use the past tense whenever you are comparing the results you can use the present tense figures equations tables so all those things you can have the present tense and any recommendation or implications like you can use very well the tentative uh, present tense so what i'll suggest uh you need to Uh, read one paper daily and uh, write one paragraph about that particular paper so it is a habit so if you start developing this particular habit so it will really help you in uh, publishing those uh, uh, quality papers along with your quality uh, scientific work now these examples whatever we discussed so i am very much thankful to steve wallace uh, for providing uh, wonderful examples uh, you can very well refer to his uh, page and uh, if you are very much keen on you can very well fetch some more documents based on all these things but but i summarized i try to cover everything that are more or less uh, required for the english perspective to have a quality research paper and so that so that i am hopeful that uh, everybody those who have attended this particular uh, session uh, definitely they will be able to publish their uh, research work maybe part of their phd work maybe part of their um, promotion uh because day by day the uh, quality has become a mandatory for everybody so if if all of you you can follow these guidelines i'm very confident that uh, your paper will definitely uh, be can be published at a very good form forum so uh, thank you very much so if you have any queries anything you can drop drop your queries on the chat box because right now i cannot see your chat from my uh, laptop i can see some of the chats on my cell phone you can very well um, send your queries uh, by my whatsapp or even by my uh, mail or even you can also call me whenever you feel like i am i will be very glad to help you all in improving uh your quality so thank you thank you very much to all of you right hope so uh we will come up with something more uh which will help all of us together to join with similar kind of meetings which will help to all the entire research community so thank you thank you very much so be in touch with us bye all of you so the very nice session sir